Well, thank you for joining us this evening, and uh, I'm very excited to be interviewing you. I've read all of your books, and uh, I had the great pleasure to interview Murray a number of times for the magazine, so it's a pleasure to finally meet you and do this in person. Thank you, Rita. And good evening. Bonsoir. So, I think we should start at the beginning. Yes. What did you have for breakfast? <gasps> <laughs> Actually, I'll be honest, because it's it's been a really bad day for me. Um, I don't we'll know talk. what I don't know what happened to me yesterday, but I, I think I first of all I thought it was the sandwich I ate, but um, I think I got some kind of bug, and I woke up this morning really not feeling myself, which is the worst the worst that can happen on when you have to go on a TV show and do a cooking demonstration at you know getting up at six o'clock in the morning, and I thought well maybe I'm tired. It's true. Uh, last week in New York I overdid it. I had friends from Europe and. We, um, we were late every night, we ate a lot, we walked a lot, we danced a lot, so I said, well, maybe, you know, I overdid it. But I didn't feel good all day, and so I had a little protein for breakfast, a little cheese and a boiled egg, a cup of coffee, and I have to say, um, I had an interview later on to have a late breakfast, which I, I was hoping would be my regular breakfast, which is a main meal for me. And I couldn't eat it. Uh, I really felt sick. But right now, I'm perfect. I'm ready for a big meal, actually. I went for a walk in the afternoon, and it was sunny and beautiful in Toronto. So I think I'm back in shape. But it's not a normal day. Not your normal breakfast. No, definitely not. Now, you've always included recipes in your book, even your first book, um, French Women Don't Get Fat. There were a few uh, key recipes in there. But I would say, in addition to the recipes that you've always offered, and obviously this is a recipe book, you've also given recipes for living, especially for uh, a modern professional woman. Uh, so my question is, should Oprah watch her back? <laughs> Well, maybe when she retires, she will um, accept my invitation I gave her when I was on her show because she came to the green room and we had a long talk. And um, she admitted that she had a real problem in that she couldn't walk past the fridge without emptying it. Emptying it. And I said, well, you have to come and live with me for a week and uh, I'll teach you a few tricks. And she said, hmm, I might take you on, on that, up on that. But she hasn't so far, so maybe next year when she's semi-retired, she will. She'll give you a call. Yes. Is it still and I'll do my best. Um, oops, sorry. <laughs> now, in North America, we seem to have a bit of an e extreme... Uh, is this working? You can hear me, I think, yeah. Uh, a bit of an extreme relationship with food, you know. Uh, I think we have something like in, the, in America, 17% of young children are morbidly obese. And then at the other end, there was a recent study of um, high school girls in Minnesota, and more than 50% of them had, over the past year, exhibited some kind of strange, uh, you know, dieting behavior. So either taking up smoking, taking up vomiting, uh, you know, laxatives, fasting, so on. Now, why is it that compared to other places in the world, other cultures, we seem to have such a, a distorted relationship with food? Well, first of all, I'd say that, uh, unfortunately, with globalization, it's starting to happen in many countries, including in France. And it saddens me that there are so many, you know, great things about America, and why do, our, do cultures always pick the worst of another nation? Uh, but that being said, um, I think America is, you know, relatively young as a country, and it is a country of extremes. And... In the first book, one of the reasons I wrote that book after living in New York for 20 plus years was because I noticed that women had a, not a good relationship with food, actually a very strange relationship with food, always feeling guilty, always on diets. And six years after my first book is out, I realized that I get still emails every day from all over the world, and the biggest surprise was that, um, and that's why we have to continue that, that fight, is that uh, so many women in the world suffer through their life because of their bad relationship with food. 
And there's no reason. Food should not be your enemy. Food should be your friend. Food is something that we need to function, to feel good, to, uh, to love, to, to uh, nurture with our family, to, to share. To It's so many good things. And at the end of this cookbook, I, I gave a list of what cooking is, mm -hmm. you know, and I hope that people will pick some of those and it will be a wow moment, like, oh, I never thought about cooking as sexy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Now, Catherine Deneuve uh, famously said that after 40, a woman has to choose between her face or her ass. Um, do, you, <laughs> do, you, do you think, I mean, she now, said that? yes, but maybe she's not making the choice, but we have Botox, we have other things today. She's maybe not making the choice, thank you, you very much. You don't, have to, you don't have to choose maybe as, as extremely, but in general, do you think that after 40, it's, for a woman, it's not a bad idea to carry a few extra pounds? Yeah, actually, it's a, it's a good question, and I live in the same neighborhood as Catherine Deneuve. Actually, when I was a student, I used to see her with Mastroianni uh, walking down the street. And now, of course, she still lives there across from Place Saint-Sulpice. And I've been in restaurants where I see her at dinner. She has a wonderful appetite. But it's true that, that she has gained weight, and many women gain weight and think that they can't do anything about it. And, and my theory, as I'm getting younger every year, is like, as you age, you eat less and you, mo you move more. And that's the recipe. And I don't deprive myself of anything, and yet, you know, my weight hasn't budged. I, I have a lot of friends who tell me, no, I don't believe it, you know, you get a tummy this, you get, you know. But, but you don't. If you, if you eat less and you move more, I mean, it's that simple. And once you've developed your little routine, because yours will be different than yours of than mine, uh, you can live very healthy and not have to worry about it. In one of your books, I think it was the business book, you talked about looking at sometimes people's manners at the table and having a few little shocks. What is, what is one of your pet peeves at the table? Um, young people who speak the mouthful and spit all over their guests when you're doing a big deal in business, which happened to me, and I was not proud of that young crowd. And they were both, I think I, I tell the story in, in the book, they were both American and French. And actually my chairman at the time made fun of me when he came to a sales meeting that, that we were teaching, you know, when you're in the luxury business and in Champagne where you have to entertain, if you are... 28 years old and you don't know what to do, you know, how to hold your fork and knife and which is a wine glass and the water glass, you have a problem. So, not to be obvious, I decided to incorporate this kind of little, you know, seminar in a sales meeting. And, and it was fine and people picked it and didn't take it personally and all that. And one year my chairman was there and he said, Mireille, why do you do this? Are these kids barbarians? <laughs> And I looked at him and I said, well, you know, don't be so judgmental. Have you seen your little colleagues in Paris? And he looked at me like kind of, you know, arrogant French way. <laughs> and a few years later, we, you know, the group dis grew and there was a lot of mobility. So we had to take a few French, um, you know, in their 20s to work in New York for a few years. And he came to a meeting and went to a restaurant. And I swear, this, you know, handsome well-educated, well-brought-up young man was there and, you know, he talked with his mouth full and it was all over. And at the end, my boss came to me and he said, you know, I'm going to have a word. We'll have to train people all over the world, including France, on good table manners. And it actually, they developed that training and now it's, of course, LVMH being LVMH, you know, they're doing it very fancy and, and there's a whole book about, you know, from how to uh, get your tie the proper way to ha how to uh, greet your guests, you know, because they come from a different culture and how to exchange business cards, all these little things that they don't teach you in university or business school, you know, and, and if you have parents who work and are too busy, who, where are you going to learn those things? And you need them in business. <laughs>